Hello Starlights! This is Tala's first college entrance test reviewer video. From the first ever Tala quiz, we have noticed that most of the questions that students find difficult to answer are the science questions. So we decided to produce this tutorial video to help you in your review because we actually realize that answering practice tests might not be very helpful if you don't know how to arrive to the correct answers to begin with. The topic for this video is mole, molar mass, and Avogadro's number. Before we start the lesson, I want to tell you the knowledge and skill that I expect you to learn after watching the video. First, you have to be able to differentiate mole and molar mass and solve problems involving relationships between mass, number of moles, and molar mass of an element. We will start by defining the terms. The first term is mole. It is a unit that we use to describe the amount of any substance. It is equal to 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power. And this number is actually called the Avogadro's number. Since mole represents a really, really huge amount, mole is usually used in atoms, molecules, and subatomic particles. To give you an idea how one mole of an element looks like, here is a sample of one mole of carbon. Since this is one mole of carbon, we can say that there are 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power of carbon atoms in this sample. To frame it in a more relatable example, the unit mole is like the unit dozen. When we say one dozen of eggs, we mean 12 pieces of eggs, right? In the same way that one mole of an element contains 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power atoms of an element. The next term we have is molar mass. It is the equivalent mass of one mole of a substance. Remember, this carbon sample that contains 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power atoms of carbon or one mole of carbon it actually weighs 12.01 grams. Mathematically, we can actually term it this way. 12.01 grams of carbon over 1 mole of carbon. This expression tells us that 1 mole of carbon weighs 12.01 grams of carbon. Thus, we say that the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 gram per mole. Take note that the standard unit that we use for molar mass is gram per mole. In the periodic table, you will usually see the mass of a single atom of an element. In this example, the atomic mass of hydrogen atom is 1.008 atomic mass unit. Good news is the numerical value of the atomic mass unit is the same as the molar mass. The only thing we need to change is the unit. So from this, we can say that one mole of hydrogen weighs 1.008 grams. It also means 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power atoms of hydrogen altogether weighs 1.008 grams per mole. Or we can denote this as molar mass of hydrogen is equal to 1.008 grams per mole. One thing to note in this expression, molar mass is represented as capital M, M, and the subscript is the symbol of hydrogen, H. Another example, this is a sample of one mole of copper. One mole of copper weighs 63.546 grams. That means... 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power 
atoms of copper all together weighs 63.546 grams. That means the molar mass of copper is 63.546 grams per mole. Last example, this is a sample of one mole of iron. One mole of iron weighs 55.845 grams. So we say or we write molar mass of iron is equal to 55.845 grams per mole. To summarize, we know that the Avogadro's number is equal to 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power and that 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power atoms is equal to 1 mole of a specific element. We also know that 1 mole of each element has a unique mass we call the molar mass. We can further generalize this to include molecules and compounds, but in this video, we will only look at molar mass of an element. So, we are done defining the important terms and I hope that you now have a clearer picture of the mole concept. As you may now realize, the number of atoms is related to the number of moles of an element. And if we know the number of moles in a sample, we can also calculate the mass of an element. We can also do the reverse process. That's why we use double-headed arrows to illustrate their relationship. And that is the second part of this video. We are going to convert one value to another value. First, we will learn how to convert the number of atoms to the number of moles. Let's do this example. We want to find out the number of moles of hydrogen if we have 3.011 times 10 raised to the 23rd power atoms of hydrogen. Before we solve this, let's look at the dozen of eggs analogy that we used earlier. This small question is like asking, how many dozen of eggs is there when you have 6 eggs? One way to solve this is to use the ratio and proportion method. This is the equation that we come up with. 6 eggs over x dozen is equal to 12 eggs over 1 dozen. You will notice that on the left part of the equation, we write 6 eggs as the numerator and x dozen as the denominator. We use x because that is the missing value. And on the right side of the equation, we have 12 eggs over 1 dozen to denote that there are 12 eggs in 1 dozen. Rearranging the equation, we will have x dozen is equal to 6 eggs over 12 eggs times 1 dozen. And then we will have the answer 6 eggs is equal to 0 0.5 dozen or 6 eggs is equal to half a dozen. Going back to the original problem, we will do the same process we did over here. Let's set up the ratio and proportion equation. We will write it this way. 3.011 times 10 raised to the 23rd power atoms of hydrogen over x mole of hydrogen is equal to 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power atoms over 1 mole of hydrogen. Again, we inspect the equation. On the left side, we have the given value and the unknown values. On the right, we have the known relationship of Avogadro's number and the mole. Solving for x moles of hydrogen, we will have 0 0.5 moles of hydrogen. Next thing we will do is the reverse. We will calculate for the number of moles given the number of atoms of an element. Example, let's find out how many atoms of hydrogen are there in 3 moles of hydrogen. We will use the dozen analogy again so that you will see that it is really easy to convert. We are just using different numbers. 
So again, how many eggs are there in three dozens of eggs? Or three dozens of eggs is equal to blank eggs. I bet in your mind you already know that we just need to multiply 12 by 3. Therefore, the answer is 36 eggs. That is also the same way to solve the second example. We just need to multiply 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power by 3. So, the answer will be 1.807 times 10 raised to the 24th power atoms of hydrogen. Of course, you will still arrive to the same answer if you choose to solve this using the ratio and proportion approach. It is up to you which method are you going to use so long as you are comfortable and you arrive at the same answer. On to the next example. We will convert the number of moles of an element to its equivalent mass. Example, convert 0 0.75 moles of copper to grams of copper. In other words, what is the mass in grams of 0 0.75 moles of copper? Again, we set up the ratio and proportion. 0 0.75 mole of copper over x grams of copper is equal to 1 mole of copper over 63.546 grams of copper, which is the molar mass of copper. Solving for the mass of copper, we will have 47.66 grams of copper. Now we will convert mass to the number of moles. How many moles of copper are there in 22.24 grams of copper? We set up the equation again. 22.24 grams of copper over x mole of copper is equal to 63.546 grams of copper over 1 mole of copper. Solving for x moles of copper, we will have 0 0.35 mole of copper. To summarize, here are the formulas showing the relationship among the number of atoms, mole, and molar mass. I put it here on the last part for those of you who are not good at memorizing formulas. Just like what we did in the previous example, you can always use the ratio and proportion technique to solve. It's good if you can memorize these formulas, but it's even better if you know how to solve the problems without them. I hope you learned in this video and gained extra confidence for your college entrance exams. Now, pause this video and answer this mini drill. To check if your answers are correct, go to bit.ly backslash mole by pala.